Dimitri, could you explain your behavior as a collector and as a founder of the foundation in, uh, in Greece, what you are doing? Yeah, it's a very usual uh, question that we are called to answer. I mean, how do you become a collector? And I've always felt through the years that I never became a collector. I was somehow born a collector. You have it in you. I think most of you here, if you are in an art fair and you're interested in collection, it's because somehow you found out that you are collectors yourselves. Of course, how far you go depends on uh, your passion and, of course, your wallet. Uh, so... <laughs> When you say wallet, there's the music. <laughs> Is it normal? <laughs> so when I'm asked uh, when I started uh, collecting, people usually mean my art collection, but uh, I say I... I bought a little statue in Thailand that I loved uh, at the age of 17 and it didn't fit in my suitcase and I was carrying it around. So there was something in the DNA about collecting and I think when you, once you're a collector it's not only in one thing. Uh, you like to put things together and make a statement. So I do that with uh, uh, wine, with photographs, with... Um, and I've gone through various things in the past. So. Collecting is a very uh, fulfilling passion. I became serious about uh, contemporary art since the early 90s. And in these uh, 20-some years, I have put together a collection of uh, a little more than 500 works uh, of international contemporary art from the period of 1980 and later. And... Uh, One characteristic of the collection is that it is very small in painting and uh, was never afraid to buy uh, large sculptures, installations. Uh, I find that if you collect uh, with uh, having in mind uh, where you put it in your house, you're not really making a collection of contemporary art, you are decorating your home. And you have nothing at home, right? Nothing. You, nothing at home. Nothing so it's a very collection. radical behavior as a collector. Yes. And uh, so uh, the collection is uh, in warehouses, in crates, because it is big installations, big things. I visited once the, the warehouse where I have them and after going inside the building and seeing all the crates, we walk outside and the owner there says to me, shows me two big containers and he says, these are yours too. So it was a work by Christoph Bücher that needs two containers, you know, the ones you see on trucks, to be uh, stored. So. I said from the beginning, if artists are expressing them, themselves in this way, I cannot just buy a painting that uh, can fit in my living room. So in that sense, the collection has a, a lot of uh, big works. Uh, the other thing I say about my collection is that I've always had a very specific sensitivity about what I put in the collection and what I leave outside, which is, I think is very important. You had the feeling at this fair that you see so many things that you like, things that uh, fit more or less with your aesthetics or the other things you have. But if you are going to make a coherent collection, uh, you have to be very strict about what you buy and what you leave outside. And I have... Uh, You know, the word collect uh, is a Latin translation of a Greek word, an ancient Greek word, which actually in Greek, collect, is silego in Greek, is I put things to speak together. Mm -hmm. uh, so the word collection, silogi in Greece, is, is about the dialogue between things. So that's why I say that's the first criterion about 
uh, things that talk to each other and add to the main theme. My main theme, I always said, I was not able to, to say that, I just felt it for many years, and then I found a, a text by a Greek writer, uh, Nikos Kazantzakis, and uh, he writes about the luminous interval. The luminous interval being saying, we come from an abyss, we end up in an abyss, and in the, this period between where we are active, where we are living, where we are creating, is the luminous interval. So I'm really fascinated by the human ability to create, to look for progress, to look for happiness, uh, to be optimistic all the time, despite uh, the difficulties, the maybe the ugliness inside. And I, I see that I made my career in business, in the food business, and I was successful only because I was always working with people who were very motivated to do the best, and it's, it's a marvel, really, uh, what we achieve as humans. So I was trying to find works always that show this struggle, this activity, this success. And of course, uh, my collection uh, has a lot of emphasis on the body, but not on the body as we talk on it in contemporary art, uh, but as the body, as, as the carrier of everything that is human, of this, uh, you know, vitality. Uh, and so you share your collection. The thing is about, if you don't keep it at home, if it's in storage, you want to lend to museum, etc., right? I have been uh, lending very freely, and uh, happily I say a lot of uh, museums and exhibition things think that a lot of work and works in my collection are useful to them to put in exhibition. So at any time, I have anything from 25 to 50 works on, on loan. And uh, I always see my, uh, I say this, and it's not very believable sometimes. I see myself as the caretaker of the creativity of other people. I don't feel I own the work because a work was made by an artist and uh, it expresses a lot of his soul. If it's a good artwork, it expresses an idea. And if it is a good artwork, it can relate, interrelate, cause thinking in all of us that see it. So an artwork is a living thing. It, it gets more meaning as it is shown, as it interacts with other works, as it interacts with each one of us. So that's how I see the life of the artwork, not something that I had the ability to buy and keep it for myself. So in that sense, I lend. And in the same vein, uh, I consider my collection a, a repository available to anybody that wants to use it. And eventually, I see it as only in, in uh, public institutions that can continue this uh, showing and this uh, dialogue with other works and with the public. So I have created a foundation because I personally felt the, the power of art. I think actually art is a basic human need. Uh, inexplainable, but it's a, it's a basic human need. It's not uh, a luxury. Uh, that's why people create these things, we put them in museums, we go, we visit them, we see them. It's a basic human need. And from my interaction of art, with art, I have had, you know, inspiration, curiosity, creativity in myself. So I said at some point that I want to do whatever I can uh, to expose the Greek public, you know, to the challenges of contemporary art. And I think that's important in my country, especially because we are going still through a big crisis, which uh, we call economic, but at its basis, it's a cultural crisis. Uh, we were not thinking right for many years. That's why we got into these troubles. So I think contemporary art has the ability uh, you know, to confront us with current issues, to make us uncomfortable, 
to make us uh, think in a new way about ourselves, about the society we live in. So I started a foundation in Athens to do that. Neon. Neon. And uh, I said two important things, which is uh, the mantra for this institution. I said, one, this is not about my collection. The activities of the foundation is not about showing the artwork that I already own. It's about going where people are and creating events that can stimulate people. Uh, so to make sure that that was uh, believable and strong, I said that is why I am not going to have a building, ever. Uh, not my own museum, not an exhibition space, uh, nothing. There are enough public spaces, private spaces, open spaces in the city that we can go and do uh, activities around contemporary art and around people. Uh, I've been doing that uh, for two years, I think, with Successfully. Success. Perhaps we can see the movie about it. We have it. a little video that shows you what we have been doing. 